Four, Coastal Trading Revitalising Australian Shipping Amendment Bill 2017, resumption of debate on the second reading. I thank the clerk. And the question is now before the House that this bill be read a second time. And in continuation, I give the call to the Honourable Member for Braddon. Welcome back. Thank you very much, Deputy Speaker, and thank you for the opportunity again to speak on this bill, as I only had a minute yesterday. So in continuation, I just want to stress from the outset that this bill will actually mean a loss of hundreds of thousands of seafarer jobs in this country. Many of those could potentially be from my electorate. I'm from an island state where we have uh, predominantly an export state and a number of shipping companies that could potentially be uh, at risk from this bill. It will mean that foreign ships and foreign crews could come in and take over some of uh, the destinations and the work that's undertaken by Australian crews and Australian ships. We've seen it before with this government when they've been issuing permits uh, left, right and centre, which has resulted in hundreds of Australian jobs being lost and yet replaced by foreign workers. And I thought this government, they, I've heard the Prime Minister say from time and time again, you know, the government is a friend of the worker, well not when it comes to the maritime industry as well. I was born into a seafaring family. My father was a seafarer. Uh, he was a steward on the Princesses of Tasmania, the Empress of Australia and the Abel Tasman, where he passed away at sea when I was quite young. These vessels were largely passenger ships bringing visitors to and from Tasmania. Much like the current spirit of Tasmania ships, they also had a large freight component. I would also like to share with the Chamber what a local seafaring job means to people in my electorate. I have a number of ports in my electorate, probably more than any other electorate in Tasmania, so there are many, many people that are supported by the shipping industry in Tasmania. Being an island state absolutely reliant upon Bass Strait shipping, Tasmanians have a strong cultural affinity with the sea and Bass Strait. Maritime operations are central to life in my electorate of Braddon and vital to the Tasmanian economy. Like many in my hometown of Devonport, Bianca, whose husband works as a seafarer, saw the crew from the Alexander Spirit. When it was docked in Devonport in 2015, we've just celebrated the third anniversary of that dispute, those workers were told that they would be sacked and replaced when, the, um, when that ship next docked in Singapore. This action has had a profound effect on her family and puts a human face on what it could mean should this government have its way. Bianca told me that I lay, at I lay awake at night, worried about my husband's job, worried that he and his shipmates are going to be replaced with a foreign crew without warning. The current coastal shipping laws mean some security for my family. It means that my children, as proud Australians, will have a chance to go to sea, just like generations of my family have done before me. Over 99 per cent of Tasmanian's freight volumes are moved by sea. The timely and efficient movement of passengers and goods to the mainland not only means hundreds of local jobs, but this also supports important industries in the tourism, agriculture, forestry, aquaculture, mining and manufacturing sectors. The most recent data from the Tasmanian government's Department of State Growth states that over 12.5 million tonnes of freight is moved through Tasmania's publicly owned ports. An additional 2.4 million tonnes of freight moved through Port Latter, which is in my electorate. Tasmania's freight task is a mix of bulk commodity, 65 per cent, and containerised freight at 35 per cent. 80 per cent of Tasmania's sea freight is for interstate trade, 17 per cent international exports, and small amount is direct overseas freight. Our containerised freight tasks is also seasonal. For imports, volumes increase in the spring and early summer. For exports, volumes increase between the summer and late autumn, driven by agricultural production. Tasmania is well serviced by three Australian-owned and crewed shipping companies, Toll, Sea Road and TT Line. Just last week, Mr Deputy Speaker, Toll Shipping announced that its two new Bass Strait freighters are expected to start operating on March 1st next year. My local newspaper, The Bernie Advocate, reported that this is a part of a $311 million spend which the Melbourne headquartered company said would significantly increase shipping capacity between Tasmania and the mainland and support economic growth and rising demand for Tasmanian produce. The vessels set to operate between Melbourne and Burnie 
are being purpose-built at a cost of $170 million. The project also includes $141 million to upgrade terminals, wharves and berthing facilities at both ports. Toll Group Managing Director Michael Byrne reportedly said, and I quote, this is the largest ever investment by a logistics business in the Bass Strait and underpins Toll's commitment to the Australian domestic market and the Bass Strait trade. Another Bass Strait freight operator, Sea Road Shipping, launched this $110 million Sea Road Mersey 2 vessel in 2016. That lifted the operations capacity by 62 per cent, and they have also uh, plans to replace the Sea Road Tamer. All of this investment and the hundreds of jobs it supports would be placed at risk by this bill. Shame. That is unacceptable to me and the people in my electorate. The Tasmanian government's inter uh, integrated freight strategy contains the following statement, and I quote, Tasmania's freight system underpins business and economic growth in the state. It also equips our economy to optimise growing national and international demand for Tasmanian products. A reliable freight system is critical to Tasmanian businesses retaining and accessing new markets. I would think those opposite ears should be pricking up on, on this kind of language. But a large proportion of Tasmanian uh, sea freight is also time sensitive, reinforcing yet again the need for reliable shipping service. This time sensitive task is especially important to Tasmania's agriculture industries and, of course, our aquaculture industries. These are high value products, including seafood, cherries, and berries. Currently, there is no data set that comprehensively defines and quantifies Tasmania's time sensitive freight market. However, the Tasmanian government, through Infrastructure Tasmania, has recently completed a report examining production volumes and potential market growth across 28 time-sensitive freight commodities, including salmon, potatoes and frozen meat. The findings of this report are significant when you give consideration to future freight volumes and the vital need of a regular and reliable shipping service. The review found that even under a modest growth scenario, the time-sensitive freight segment is forecast to increase by 43 per cent. Mr Deputy Speaker, I trust the House now understands how vital a regular and reliable shipping service is to Tasmania. Under this government, they have destroyed Australia's car manufacturing industry. And now it seems, once again, this government is determined to destroy Australia's coastal shipping industry and, more broadly, our maritime industry. I have listened intently and I am yet to hear one member on the opposite side say the magic words, I support Australian shipping industry, Australian ships, Australian crews, Australian jobs. Like so many other pieces of legislation that come into this place, this government has form. A previous bill sought to deregulate the Australian domestic shipping industry resulted in replacing Australian ships with foreign ships resulted in replacing Australian crews with cheap overseas labour. Tasmanian-owned shipper Sea Road said at that time it could f uh, they could be forced to replace local crews with foreign workers. Sea Road was also concerned that that bill would ultimately lead to reduced services and increased prices. The government's own modelling from that bill anticipated that four of the sh six ships serving Bass Strait would contain foreign flag vessels if that bill was passed. Tragedy. Fortunately, the Senate saw the multiple flaws in that piece of legislation and rejected it. Even with the failure of that bill, a dozen Australian ships have been reflagged as foreign ships, replacing Australian crews with overseas labour. And I put this test to every member sitting opposite who intends to support this bill. Go and speak to one of the many, many workers on the MV, MV Portland or the Alexander Spirit who were sacked because of a stroke of the pen by Senator Abetz that meant that those ships were going to be sent off, replaced by a foreign ship and replaced by a foreign crew. And many of those workers, including in your state, Mr Speaker, have yet to find other work. The crew of the Alexander Spirit, while docked in Devonport, were told they would lose their jobs when the vessel next, dock, next docked in Singapore. While this ultimately did happen, I was heartened to see the strong community support for the crew of the Alexander Spirit, and those crew members were not local to my hometown where that dispute took place. They were from across the country, but the community stood beside them. Braddon voters, Tasmanians and Australians do not want to see Australian jobs going to overseas workers. 
This is what this bill will do and those sitting opposite who vote for this are potentially sacking hundreds of seafarers and replacing them with foreign workers doing exactly the same job as those Australian workers. Not only that, this bill even places more risk on our fuel security and our national security. To some members opposite, these are important factors that they support at any other time of the week. But if they vote for this bill, it's just to me an ideological attack on maritime workers and the industry and any future notional support from those opposite who espouse national fuel security as something they care about is just a hollow, insincere gesture. If those opposite are truly concerned about fuel security, as I know the member for Canning is, who is the chair of the Parliamentary Joint Committee on Intelligence and Security, and the Liberal Senator Jim Molan, they should cross the floor and not support this bill. It's that simple. And I'll explain a little bit further. I've spent a lot of my time outlining why a regular and reliable shipping service is critical to the importance of Tasmania. I would have thought to give the Australian shipping industry confidence the government would want to achieve bipartisan support. In fact, contained within the minister's own discussion paper for this bill, he said bipartisan support is essential. On this count alone, he has failed. This bill allows temporary licensed foreign flag vessels to significantly vary their freight volumes and days they are carrying the domestic freight while at the same time making it almost impossible for an Australian general licence ship to contest those movements. This means Australian shippers simply won't know what is being carried until after the event. In effect, this means any half-smart foreign operator and compliant inverted commas, local freight company can gain the system to use foreign flag ships. What is also disappointing, Mr Deputy Speaker, is despite the minister making a commitment to consult on this bill, he did not do this appropriately. Australia's peak, uh, shipping industry body, the Maritime Industry Australia Limited, was not invited to the consultation sessions on this bill. MIAL membership includes Toll, Sea Road, ANL, Northwest Shelf Shipping Services Company, BP Shipping, just to name a few. No other Australian maritime businesses except Carnival Australia, who are a cruise ship operator, were invited. How can you possibly consult on shipping changes without speaking to the actual shipping companies? It was almost as if the minister wanted to consult in an echo chamber with the sounds he heard were the ones he wanted. Because if he had consulted with MIAL, he would have heard this, and I quote from MIAL's media release from September last year, there is nothing in the bill to assist Australian ship owners compete with foreign ships that have all but unfettered access to coastal trades. We have held low expectations on that front and unfortunately haven't been disappointed there. This is a damning indictment from Australia's peak shipping industry body of this bill. Following discussions with Sea Road, I understand Bass Strait may uh, currently have some protections. There is only one temporary licence available for Bass Strait. If one was issued from Devonport to Melbourne or Bell Bay to Melbourne, Sea Road would be able to object and stop it. Similarly, Toll could do the same from Burnie to Melbourne. However, I invite the government to provide Tasmanian shippers an assurance that this will continue, because I am concerned that if this bill passes, will Bass Strait be opened up more widely to temporary licensed vessels? I am advised that this could be the case. If this is the case, how can potentially opening up Bass Strait to the whim of foreign shipping companies achieve the Tasmanian Liberal government's own objective of a reliable shipping service? What measures will the government put in place to prevent foreign shippers cherry-picking Tasmania's peak periods, thus undermining existing Australian-owned shippers? What guarantee can the Prime Minister give to ensure Tasmania is serviced by Australian flag shippers? I look forward to receiving these answers, and I will be on it until I get those answers. But there are so many other reasons why Labor will not support this bill. Thank you.